Uh, good morning uh, children today in 10th standard we are going to continue with the chapter on photosynthesis in the last class we were discussing about the light reaction and i just i would like to recollect those that what are the phases in light reaction number one is activation of the chlorophyll molecule and in this process energy is absorbed and that energy is used for second step which is called the photolysis of water and then it is followed by formation of the oxygen and hydrogen atoms this hydrogen combines with nadp nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate to get reduced nadph and of course the uh, process of photophosphorylation where the electrons help in combination of adenosine diphosphate and inorganic inorganic phosphate through the membrane of the thylakoids uh, Uh, the protons that are moving through the membrane of the thylakoid that gives the energy to combine to form the ATP. Now that means we are getting uh, two things from the light reaction which are utilized in the dark reaction. One is NADPH that is reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate and adenosine triphosphate which will be required in the process of dark reaction. Now in dark reaction as you know that uh, the dark reaction takes place in the uh, stroma in the stroma of the uh, thylakoid and in the stroma there are various types of enzymes present and these enzymes help in uh, forwarding this type of reaction now what happens in the dark reaction you just see here i am showing you with a flow chart here that in dark reaction this is also known as the calvin cycle or sometimes it is called the blackman's reaction the site of the dark reaction is the stroma okay and what happens there are few phases here the first phase is carbon dioxide that enters to the stomata it is absorbed by a intermediate compound which is called RUBP that is called ribulose bisphosphate RUBP is called ribulose bisphosphate now this is a five carbon comp intermediate compound which is present in the stroma which is actually formed continuously in the dark reaction itself so the first thing is that co2 is absorbed and in presence of an enzyme which is called rubisco it is converted to a compound called phosphoglyceraldehyde phosphoglyceric acid so it is one molecule one carbon and five carbon to form two three carbon compound PGA phosphoglyceric acid is a three uh, three carbon compound. So that means here one plus five is six. Two into three six. Now this PGA is a compound which we call the first stable compound formed in photosynthesis. Of course, the reaction is uh, not so easy as we are we have to discuss it very uh, in uh, briefly here in this in ten standard level. now some of this pga phosphoglyceric acid in presence of nadph which you have got from uh, the light reaction and of course energy which you also got from the dark reaction in form of atp this uh, materials they help in conversion of some of the pga to form glucose so glucose is the main primary in a compound which is the product uh, we say in photosynthesis so glucose is formed here and but in the process you see the rubp is being used up so there is a process by which rubp is also regenerated so some of the pga phosphoglyceric acid is also used for conversion uh, of pga to rubp ribulose bisphosphate because in the reaction this will be required so it will be depleted if it is not manufactured continuously so here we say there are three steps the first one is called the glycolytic reversal that means carbon dioxide is converted to pga why it is called glycolytic reversal is because this uh, process you know the reverse process takes place in glycolysis in case of respiration so since it is reverse of glycolysis you know you know in respiration pga is converted to co2 where atp is formed here co2 is converted to pga so we call it a glycolytic reversal the second step is called this pga is converted to glucose is what we call the glucose formation or what we call the glucogenesis or formation of the glucose here the 
last step is called PGA to RUBP is called regeneration of RUBP. So these are the three steps of the uh, dark reaction. So we see that at the end of the reaction what happens to the glucose is the glucose is uh, whatever glucose is used for respiration that is used and rest of the glucose is converted uh, uh, converted to starch and stored in various parts of the leaf. So this is uh, basically the outline of the light reaction and the dark reaction. Now we have to study about the various reactions, these are very important uh, in photosynthesis that what are the reactions that uh, we have to study. The first like example that you know in every photosynthetic reaction we uh, can confirm whether photosynthesis has taken place by the formation of starch. So if you see starch is formed at the end of the reaction we, have, we think that the photosynthesis has taken place. If the starch is not formed due to lack of certain factors then we can say that that factor is necessary for photosynthesis. So usually you know this is how we set up a uh, set up a control by removing one of the factors and finding that that factor whether it is necessary for photosynthesis or not. So we have first of all what we have to do is we have to know that what is the starch test how do we test starch in a leaf. So you have to follow these steps. So listen very carefully. The first thing that happens in starch test is that the leaf is plucked. On when the leaf is plucked, usually you know the life process in the leaf continues. So what we have to do, we have to dip the leaf in uh, warm water, hot water, so that the life process stops because it should not continue. Because you know a leaf plucked, it is still living. So that leaf has to be killed. So we kill it by dipping it in water. The second step that we do is remove the chlorophyll because you know usually in starch test we do with iodine solution. But if the green color persists then the iodine solution may not give the blue black color as wanted. As because that uh, green color uh, is you know it will uh, merge with the brown color of this uh, what you call iodine solution and it can give a different color. And starch, you know, basically it is colorless. So what is done is that we have to remove the chlorophyll. So how is chlorophyll removed? You can see here, a chlorophyll is removed by putting the leaf in a, a test tube containing ethyl alcohol. Okay. And this test tube is indirectly boiled in a water bath. You can see this is the water bath. Water bath is a bigger beaker which contains the test tube. And we heat it indirectly because... When this will be heated, the alcohol is a very volatile substance and it is inflammable. So when the alcohol comes out, the fire may cause uh, uh, this uh, fire of the Bunsen burner may cause this to burn. So that's why it is kept in the water bath and heated. Now when you heat it continuously, you will see the alcohol here inside this test tube turns green and the leaf turns white. So the leaf... Uh, turns white because the alcohol is an organic solvent it dissolves the chlorophyll which is an organic substance and the leaf is devoid of color or it may retain little bit of uh, greenish color very lightly now the next step is that when you boil the leaf in alcohol it becomes very brittle so the second step is that we dip it in warm water and when we dip it in little bit of warm water what happens the leaf again softens now when the leaf softens, then what we do, we put the leaf in a small petri dish and spread it out evenly. And when it is spread out evenly, we drop few drops of iodine solution. And when we drop iodine solution, you see wherever starch is there, it will show blue-black color. Maybe the leaf may not contain starch in all the parts, but wherever the starch is there, that, that will have the blue-black color. So this is the process by which we can uh, show that uh, or we can say that starch is there in the leaf. Now the first reaction that we are test that we are or experiment that we are going to do is to prove that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis. So how do we do this? We keep a potted plant, a well watered potted plant and uh, which has been previously put in a dark room because we put a, leaf, a plant in a dark room because initially we have to remove the starch from the whole plant or particularly from the leaf. That is called destarching of the plant. 
So how discharging is there? Then if you keep a plant, potted plant in a dark room or dark cupboard for 48 hours, it is assumed that whatever starch is stored in the plant, that is removed. So what we do is, we take a discharge potted plant and here put a Ganox photo screen. Ganox photo screen is a type of screen where it will expose the leaf to certain parts and it, some of the parts will be hidden from the sunlight. Or you can use a black paper also, or clip a black paper over the leaf. Now this leaf is kept in, the whole plant is exposed to sunlight say for about uh, 2 to 3 hours. And after it is exposed to sun, sunlight, the leaf will be plucked from this and the same process will be undergone for decolorizing the leaf. That means boiling it, dipping it in hot water, boiling it in alcohol, uh, then again dipping it in warm water and when iodine solution will be added, it will be shown that wherever the sunlight was exposed on the leaf, that part will become blue-black color in color and rest where it was hidden that part will not show the color showing that photosynthesis has not taken place as because sunlight was absent. The third reaction is the carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. Again, you have to take a discharge plant and the discharge process is same in every of the reaction and we have to discharge it. Now on the discharge plant, one of the leaf of it will be inserted into a uh, bottle with a split cork inside so that half of the leaf or one third of the leaf is inside the bottle containing KOH or say caustic potash mixture of KOH and NaOH. Now this leaf along with the bottle is kept in sunlight. Other conditions will remain perfectly alright. The leaf is then plucked after some time and again the same procedure of discharging is done here in the process and the leaf is put into a petri dish an iodine solution is added. So when iodine solution is added, the leaf that was part which is inserted inside the bottle that will give the color of the iodine, but the exposed part where the carbon dioxide was present, that part will turn blue-black. So this is an experiment to show that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. So in today's class, uh, these are the, the three experiments we are going to learn about and we also learn about the, uh, the dark reactions and go through the rea uh, reactions of it and if you have any question you can put up the questions. We have to also study about the certain uh, modifications in the leaf that uh, how that it facilitates uh, the photosynthesis process by right? like leaves are very thin uh, so that it can translocate the food materials the chloroplast are found more on the upper surface and also in the lower surface, particularly in the palisade cells, there is presence of the stomata on the underside of the leaf in dicot plants or on both sides of the leaf on the monocot plants. The distribution of the stomata is there for facilitating the entry of carbon dioxide. So we'll take that up in the next class, in the beginning of the next uh, class. Until then, thank you very much and take care.